Uh, she and I had a studio okay. down in Washington. We did our graduate work together, <clears throat> and we had the studio. And her father was my best friend, and he was an old designer from the old school. Right. My best friend, and uh, so we were used to working real hard. And when I went to Mattel, I was bored. And so I just said, okay, I'll take whatever you want, Tarzan? Sure, I'll do Tarzan. But you were you packaging. Want... Yeah, I was supposed to just do packaging. Oh, wow. but it was boring, you know, and I'd been trained at Art Center, so I could do all of it, and I'd worked in a foundry, so I could... I know I do the casting. Right. Stuff. Okay. So that helps <laughs> big time. <laughs> Everything's about that. That's what that, that makes us, that makes total sense now. Yeah, yeah. But uh, when I got there, I was bored, so I was I was just getting ready to leave. I was I would go to work, and they had all this talent in this bullpen, 50, 60 people. Wow. And all this talent, and they weren't using it. And I could, I went, I'd tell her all the time. I'd say, it, they've got great people there, but. You just wait to hear from things out of meetings and stuff like that. Right. And uh, so you're sitting there going, well, yeah, but I'm ready to go now. Come on, let's go, let's go. <laughs> and uh, they're saying, no, no, we wait. You have to wait to hear from management. You have to wait to hear from marketing. So finally, I just started drawing my own stuff. I, I, it was the same stuff I'd been working on as a kid. Wow. And they came by and they saw it. And then they didn't have anything. And Kenner came out with the first Star Wars. So the vice president, well, president of Mattel, he said, uh, he said, what do you got? Well, the prelim guys, that I wasn't a prelim guy. I was just a development guy. So when they came down, they'd start taking my drawings off my, my cubicle wall. And my boss, a little feisty guy named Shel Platt, he said, uh, if you take his stuff, he goes with it. <laughs> and they all went, no. <laughs> no, he, not necessarily. And he said, yeah. He said, if you take his stuff, he goes with it. And so I went, which was the luckiest thing that could have happened. Because then I began to see how things worked, and I realized that they were just a bunch of posers. <laughs> and so, you know, it was like life. It was like everyday life that all of us have gone through. Right. You look at somebody and you go, there's nothing going on there. They're not really doing anything. They're, they're, just, they're just all sitting around collecting the money right. and kicking back. And the people I worked with, I have nothing but respect for. But the people that were the so-called management were... In my opinion, they were just filling space. You know, right. If I said, if I no, being, which is pretty funny because then you became management, and then you were yeah. Then I became president. <laughs> then, then I was yeah. vice president, so then I were them. You know. Uh, <laughs> but I, I never sat in an office. In fact, it wasn't long after they took my drawing board out of my office. Then I had a vice president. I heard about that. They took your table out of your office. Like, yeah. Literally took it out of your office. Yeah, I, I called. They said yeah, vice presidents here. don't draw. Yeah, I called the CEO of the company. I said, Jill, what are you doing? And she says, we don't pay exact senior vice presidents to draw. And I said, well, that's where every idea I've got from. Yeah, it comes yeah, from. That's how I even talk in meetings and stuff. I just draw oh, all the time. All right. And they said, well, that's not what we, we like. What kind of, by the way, what kind of tire yeah. do you wear today? <laughs> <laughs> what are you dressed yeah. like today? Oh, man. So many inner, inner things happening in there. Wow. And see this right here? Uh-huh. That, that was, the Battle Cat started with Tarzan. And Tarzan was an eight and a quarter inch figure. Oh, really? And Battle Cat was with him, but I'd done the Tarzan line. And so I kept the cat because it looked pretty well sculpted to me. Oh, of course, but, yeah. yeah it was, but it was just a slug. Not that that's not good, mm -hmm. but for toys, you usually need some play time. Yeah. So when, we, when Tony and I did the first He-Man, we attached the, all of the joints with little, little eyelets and rubber bands to see how it would wow, fit on stuff. Wow, that's awesome. And so when we put it on the Battle Cat, it fell off because it, its legs wouldn't go up far enough. Right. And we couldn't go any bigger. So what we did is I did the armor, which did two things, added play pattern to the cat, but also made it to where this this belly that comes up like this, then it would fit in his in his groinal region, you might say. Wow, <laughs> that's so crazy! I, I love that. Yeah, the, the the color pattern is just like I, I just remember being a kid and, and getting that, and it was like the most amazing toy. I mean, just good. Thank you. It was all all of them, everything. everything Skeletor <laughs> is like one of my favorite Funny. characters ever created. So. Skeletor started by me getting the shit scared out of me. Really? Long Beach Pike. I was about, uh... What? 
Do you yeah. remember the Long Beach Pike? You know what the Long Beach Pike was? No. It was, it was a real sleazy carnival thing where all the sailors... the Queen Mary. Oh, yeah. really? Oh, the Queen Mary. Yeah. Okay. And then the sailors would get leave. That's where they'd go to get tattoos oh, okay. and all that stuff. They had, they had great... that. Sailor Jerry stuff. Oh, okay. Right? Yeah, all the traditional yeah, stuff. Yeah, the great stuff. And, and, but we, and it was scary. They would chase us out of there because they didn't want us hanging around the tattoo shops. But they had a big double Ferris wheel and a the Cyclone Racer, which was the that was a scary thing. It was, a big, it was a big. It was poster. it was big, but it was real sleazy. Right. And uh, so I went down there, <laughs> and uh, my father took me to a place called the Fun House. All of the great, all the kids. Yeah. yeah. And I went in there, and they had a. Uh, this monster that dropped out of the ceiling. This is and what's in the, in the book. This oh, it's your, right. yeah, it's in the book. And it scared me so bad, I actually climbed up my dad. I actually climbed literally up his clothing oh, like this. Oh, my God. And my dad didn't like anything that wasn't very macho. So uh, he kept taking me through it. And this guy would drop down, loud horns, lights flashing on and on. And it scared the death. And I, I finally I said, Wait, wait, wait. It's wait. a body that falls down. It's a yeah. body. Yeah, totally. I know exactly what you're talking about, yeah. And jingles around jingles like this and, and the laughs and, and big horns yeah. are going off. And I said to my dad, I said, it's real, Dad. It's real. And he said, no, it's not. It's just a dummy. And I said, no, I can see. I can see in his face. I can see where his mandible is because I'd always been drawing. And I said, I can show you. It's real. And my dad said, well, you're going through again. So you have an opportunity to show me. And uh, so that became my skeletor. It was in the back of all my dreams, that that shadow that's in the back wow. of all your bad dreams. Yeah, that's and so amazing. It was there. Now at 75, I think I've conquered it, but I'm not sure. <laughs> if one of them dropped out of yeah, it's only I tried. Guys. I wet my pants before. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, you probably wet your pants. Yeah, I might do it anyway. Hey, uh, tell them what it was, though. What? Tell them what it was. Oh, it was really a guy. It oh, was wait. an old-time cowboy. I looked it up and found out what he was. And some people have done an article on it. And in fact, it's been on the Discovery Channel. And it was this old cowboy that was dead. It was a real skeleton that dropped out. It was. It I was could like smell it. Have you ever, something. when you never forget what that smell is, and as a little kid, I was going through there and I went, Don, this smells like death. Oh. And, you know, of course I'm trying to tell my dad, my dad, he's going, suck it up, kid. Come on, it's time to be a man, you know. Oh, I don't care what it is, that's bad. That's, that's something. And it's an old cowboy. It's just like old cowboy. Oh my god! And he'd been embalmed and then put in a show, <laughs> and they'd stood him out in front of a cigar store at one time. And his whole story is there. Wow! Yeah, it's fascinating. That is fascinating. Everything in Eman ties into something in my life that way. Really. really?